Hey y'all, it is Dr. Tasha and I am here to hop in with a quick video that I want to share the answer to a question that I get a lot. And that is what textbooks are helpful in psychiatry? So I'm actually going to just walk you through. You can see a little pile next to me, some of the books that I used in residency. And this is just some of the books I pulled from my lovely little library of books the books that I honestly genuinely used the most. These books really are the key to how I learned and how I grew as a psychiatrist. The first book is technically three books. So first here is the pocket version of the DSM. DSM-5, like you can't be a psychiatrist without the DSM-5. <laughs> like that's just, that's just it but I have different versions of it, counting all three of them has one. So technically they call this the desk reference, not the pocket book. If you use, let's say a white coat, this will fit into a white coat pocket right there in the front. If you don't, that's okay. It's small enough to carry around or you can just keep it on your desk. So I'm not gonna lie, I've not as often used this desk reference, although it is quite helpful because it's a pared down version of this bad boy. <laughs> so this is the full DSM-5 and you'll see I have another one on my lap and we'll get to this in a moment. But the DSM-5, look, as I said, you can't be a psychiatrist without it. <laughs> Baby, what is he doing? Um, well, basically we know the DSM-5 Diagnosis and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders 5th edition it's where we go to for the understanding of illnesses. So for instance, I just opened to a random page here and we have in the dissociative disorders category, you'll see here. So let's say I was interested in learning more about dissociative disorders. You can learn about it in this section of the book. So here we have the dissociative disorders section and then there is dissociative identity disorder, dissociative amnesia, depersonalization or derealization disorder, other specified dissociative disorders and unspecified dissociative disorder. So for instance, it's a really quick reference to walk through the criteria for each of these so that you have the ability to recognize what, what is it that your patient is presenting with? What is the diagnosis? And figuring out the diagnosis is important because each of those diagnoses has nuances in the treatment. So you might wonder, you know, why don't you just say it's a general dissociative disorder? No, you want to make sure that you're understanding, you know, is this related to PTSD? Is it a standalone dissociative disorder? Is it linked to depression in any kind of way? And then based on things like that, those specific specifiers, you'll figure out what specific type of medication or treatment by way of therapy would be the most effective. So the desk version, it's cheaper. I'm going to drop links to all of these down below in the description box for you. And this is going to be the cheap, quick, small, light, flexible. You can carry this around for my ladies. You can drop this in your little purse if you want in your backpack. Fellas, put it in your backpack or whatever bag you like to carry. But that's the cheap, more uh, easily accessible version. This one, I use this one a lot, to be honest. Um, this is actually what I had on my desk in my office in residency. I use this very frequently because I love to just learn about specific diagnosis. Uh, I feel like that's something I actually have like a pretty solid gifting in of being able to tease out diagnoses. And some of that is from my knowledge that I've acquired over time, but also I use the DSM-5 y'all. So I encourage you really become one <laughs> with the DSM-5. And then the third book in my first book category is the DSM-5 TR. So this is the updated version where the text revision, where they made some changes to specific verbiage um, or even added in some cultural nuances of how to distinguish particular diagnoses. And I'm not going to lie, I don't really be using this one. I... Honestly, I think I only took the wrapping off when someone asked me to borrow it. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I still have not really used this. Um, I don't really know why, but as I'm flipping through it, this is actually the first time I'm even literally flipping through the book. It's kind of nice. It has like color. The other ones are all black and white. 
the headings have color yeah i don't know maybe you just get the most up-to-date one if you don't have one yet so these it's category number one get some version of the dsm again links all in the description box these are quite long are heavy so these are heavier you're not going to necessarily be carrying this around with you in the hospital uh it's heavier to put in a backpack so this is really like that library version personal library version of the book um but again link down below and a reminder for any of you watching you know if you're a resident you usually will have cme continuing medical education money maybe it's 500 for the year more or less if you're an attending in an academic institution or honestly i even know these days the private institutions are offering this as well you will also have a continuing medical education stipend so you don't gotta be using your own money honey no i did not buy this with my own money use that cme money to get the book so that's book number one all right next up we have stall's prescriber's guide let me just tell you this, like if you do not have this book, that means you're a genius, period. Like if you don't use this book, I'm going to assume that you are a genius. You know, every and every and any single side effect, you know, every starting dose, you know, every contraindication, you know, every population you have to be aware of. You got this bad boy memorized or you're using a different version of some kind of prescribing guide. But to be honest, this is the book like this book honestly i probably use this bad boy more than i use the dsm because pharmacology it's there's always areas to improve on of learning the contraindications the drug drug interactions what things do you need to check do you need to check the ekg qtc cbc bmp all of those things in case you don't have it all 100 percent memorized styles got you boo and styles also it's 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 just a great book. Like, I promise you, uh, I don't have it in my work office now as an attending. And truthfully, that's just because my office kind of fluctuates and I don't have like a home base. But in residency, I didn't, this didn't even make it to the bookshelf, y'all. This bad boy, it was on my desk because I would be referring to this thing often. Okay. So if we, to give you an example, I'm going to flip. I just randomly flipped to this page. So here we're looking at this antipsychotic. It popped up as cariprazine. So what it'll walk you through, for instance, it's what is the brand name? Vralar. We know cariprazine as Vralar. Is there a generic version yet? No, it's still in uh, that patent time frame where the pharmaceutical company gets to make Boku dollars. So that's where we're at. We talk about what class it's in. What is it commonly prescribed for? And what's cool is it'll bold. And I don't know if it'll focus. We'll see. But yeah, it should focus in on whatever is bolded are the things that are FDA approved. So for instance, we know that Raylar is FDA approved for schizophrenia in both the acute and maintenance phase. We know that it's approved for acute mania and mixed depressive mania episodes. It's also approved for bipolar depression. And then there's a long list of other things that it's commonly used for, even though it doesn't have a specific FDA approval for those things. Then it talks about how the drug works, the mechanism of action, how long until it works, um, if it works at all, like what's the efficacy of the medication? Uh, and if it works, yeah, that's just in general, this one specifically for bipolar depression, what to do if it doesn't work. Um, and then specifically again for bipolar depression, things that are best to augment with the medication. So, you know, for instance, uh, if there's treatment resistance, you can augment with valproic acid, with lamotrigine, topamax, lithium, benzodiazepines, what tests you should get before and what you should be monitoring while someone's on the medication, um, what, you, what the side effects are, what the, the ones that are notable, and then the ones that are life-threatening. So it's really walking you through, and there's like way more pages. So like it's all, again, zooming in for you to be able to see all of this. It's so, 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 so helpful. Um, what the dosing ranges are, what capsules are available, other just general precautions to be aware of, special populations to be aware of, what are the potential advantages, disadvantages, the primary target symptoms. So it like this book, and it does that for every single medication. And even here, this page, 
So this is looking at an example of if you need to switch from a different medication to cariprazine, how you do that cross titration most effectively. So truthfully, like this book, you gotta have it, all right? Like again, the link is down in the description box. Use your own money if you want. If you don't have access to CME, that is the continuing medical education money. Um, but if you have access to CME, stock up on the books, okay? Just use your money to get reimbursed to stock up on these books. All right, so there's that. All right, y'all, and last but definitely not least, it is my handy dandy DBT skills training manual. This book is so helpful. So even if you're not technically doing dialectical behavioral therapy, which I was blessed to be able to do dialectical behavioral therapy in residency for two years, this is still a helpful book. You can tell how much I've used it because I have my post-it notes in here. Like that's really a sign like of how much I've used this book. Post-its, we have highlighting. This book has been highlighted. Highlight, if highlight is a word, I've highlighted it many a times. I've used it. I've taken notes, read, reread. Yo, me and this book, we go together. <laughs> okay, we go together. Um, and if you're not doing DBT, the reason why I think the DBT training manual could still be quite effective is that it helps you to understand skills of DBT, which I find to be so incredibly helpful when I'm doing psychopharmacology appointments and when I'm doing other forms of therapy as well. So just as I gave examples with the other books, let's hop in here to just look for a random page. Here, for instance, emotional regulation skills. Again, you can see my post-its, my highlighting and all of that, but emotional regulation skills in a person who may have borderline personality disorder, for instance, which is primarily who DBT is for, may have challenges with emotional regulation, but there are a lot of people out there who have problems with emotional regulation. And I personally found this book to be quite helpful for myself as much as it has been helpful with me and my patients. So for instance, here you're talking about how do you understand and name emotions? How do you understand the function of emotions? How do you identify obstacles to changing emotions? identifying and labeling the emotions, um, checking the facts, changing unwanted emotions. Like this is great stuff. And it doesn't have to just be discussed in the context of DBT. These are topics that are incredibly applicable to all of our patients. And being able to have an understanding of DBT for yourself allows you to have a greater level of impact on your interactions when you're working with patients. So this is another book that I recommend really for that reason, because who doesn't want to be the best psychiatrist that they can be? I want to be the best psychiatrist that I can be. You're watching this because you want to be the best psychiatrist that you can be. So here we are doing that together with a quick recap in backwards order, the DBT training manual. We have our stalls prescribing guide. And last but certainly not least, our DSM-5 in whichever version, <laughs> if I can get all three of these, whichever version floats your boat. So as a quick reminder, the links to all of these are in the description box. Using these links down below helps to support this channel. And I'm excited to just keep bringing you more content like this one, where I just answer questions that frequently come into my DMs or my email inbox and answer them for the masses. If you have any additional questions or other books that you wanna recommend, just go ahead and drop that down below in the comments and we can chat together and I'll let you know, you know, maybe those are some of the books I use too, or you may teach me about books that I haven't heard about. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.